the first one is uh, the board met in executive session prior to this evening's public meeting to discuss personnel, litigation, and matters which if discussed in public would violate a lawful privilege. And the other one is just a note that Governor uh, Wolf declared an emergency yesterday uh, based on the after effects of Hurricane Ida. So this meeting is being conducted while there's a governor's emergency in place. Okay. Uh, so just a welcome to everybody uh, and uh, particularly uh, Robert Hislop. I hope that you and your community are uh, staying out of floodwaters. I understand there's quite a bit of flooding going on out there. Um, you, you should know, I'm sure you do know that our public works department is out all over the township addressing the issues as best they can. As a matter of fact, Chris Kluhl uh, called in from his car. He's not going to be able to make tonight's meeting uh, because he is out with his crew. Um, but now I will turn it over to Commissioner uh, Mitch Sigmundfeld, Chair of Public Works. Good evening, everybody. We're going to go through first. You want me to do the approval of expenditures? So I'll do that as well. Normally, you handle that. Oh, normal. no, go ahead. Okay, fine. Uh, item 1A under approval of expenditures. Recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for John Meenan's transmission in the amount of $4,845.42 for the replacement of the transmission in police vehicle number 2620. There is an attachment. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board? None being shown, so I'll move for approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item Aye. 1B, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for signal control products in the amount of $15,690 to purchase a new Wavetronics radar cabinet and two-way radar system for the intersection of Old York Road and Spring Avenue. There is an attachment, I know. Um, the, I don't know whether there's anybody here who could speak to it. Are there any questions or comments from members of the board? None being seen, I'll move to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item 1C, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve an increase of funds for, to an existing blanket purchase order for Grand Turk Equipment, Inc. in the amount of $11,499 for equipment repair and purchases for public works. Again, any questions or comments from members of the board? None being evident, I'll move to question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, 1D, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for traditional sign company in the amount of $5,000 for the graphics for the 2021 police vehicles. There's a very clear um, attachment that shows some of that. Are there any questions or comments on that expenditure? None seen, I'll call the well, question. Oh, Commissioner Rappaport, me. I missed your hand, I'm sorry. No, it came up a little late. No, I just, I wanted to clarify that um, we would normally spend that kind of money on whatever design. So it isn't like it's a new, um, uh, an extra amount of money for a, a new design. This, whatever the design would be, they have to get the logo. And so that's what that money is about. In case anybody thinks it's an extra um, design or something like that. So that. That is correct. And then also too, this is being brought to the board so that you can see the expenditure and approve the expenditure for the vehicles. And they're not lumped into uh, previously where you, you didn't know these expenses were taking place or they were uh, brought back to you. Right. Does it matter to the board that the first uh, visual is actually a picture of Mr. Zankowski on the police vehicle? Huh? <laughs> I guess not. Uh, so we, we're looking for the approval. Are there any other questions or comments? None being stated. I'll call the question. All those in favor of item 1D? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. We got item two, receipt of monthly reports, citizen committee uh, meeting minutes. 2A is the August 2021 Highway Department report. I'll simply um, comment that, that under um, Boak Oil, significant amount of storm sewer, sewer and inlet maintenance activity was done, watershed and flood uh, protection that included, you know, cleaning up trees, debris, and steam uh, stream banks. So it, it's really reassuring. I, I know we had our meeting on stormwater management, but to see the amount of work that's done consistently. Are there any other questions or comments on the highway department report? 
None being said, so I'll move for that it be accepted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item uh, B is the July reference refuse and recycling department report. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of accepting the uh, report, say aye. 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 Item uh, 2C, August 2021, Parks Maintenance Department. And again, um, similar to what I, I referenced in Highway Department, maintenance, litter and debris removal, branches, trees, trails being you know maintained, uh, things inspected. It's again, it's reassuring to see the the detail and how much work's done by these departments month in, month out. And you know, in a day like today, we can appreciate it even more. Any other questions or comments from uh, members of the board? None being seen, I'll move to uh, accept the report from Parks Maintenance, item uh, 2C. All those in favor? Hi. Hi. Uh, I'll just keep the, my editorial short. 2D, August 2021 uh, Code Administrator Report. I think it's interesting to note that this is one of those issues that you sometimes don't pay attention to, but just to give you an example of what Mr. Sergio and his group do, there were 93 complaints regarding weed and, weeds and grass. Two thirds of those resolved. 29 complaints resol uh, with respect to solid waste problems. 40% of those resolved, 56 complaints uh, resolving housing issues, 50% of those resolved. A busy month and they continue to, to pile up. And Mr. Sergio, thank you for all the efforts you're putting in for that. Are there any other questions or comments from other members of the board? None being seen, I'll move for approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And item 2E, especially when we hear that Joe Stuckert uh, is you know a, a little bit uh, challenged in this weather. Um, Joe Stuckert has uh, returned to his three full pages and back to his normal work volume. And the fact that he's out today and that he had some some potential risk, uh, he is appreciated uh, day in day out, month in month out with his reports. Any other questions or comments from members of the board? None being seen, so I'll call for approval. All those in favor. Of item uh, two e, uh, thank you. Aye. Okay, uh, there were no meetings on shade tree advisory and on the environmental advisory council. Uh, item two h was the Lamont Board of Historical and Architectural Review. Uh, there's an August nineteenth meeting. There's attached information, and we have a number of items to review. H one approval of a certificate of appropriateness. For example, L twenty one two seventy two of applicant Ruben Meacham. Property owner of 7405 Cedar Lane, Lamont, uh, PA 19027, for the installation of four foot high white PVC vinyl 50% fence in the front and partially up the side, changing to six foot high white PVC solid uh, vinyl solid fence, continuing up the same side across back and ending behind uh, garage in conformance with existing zoning requirements. Uh, are there any comments from the ward commissioner on this one? I don't see any. Um, so I'll recommend approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item H2, approval of a certificate of appropriateness uh, for application L21273 of applicant Darla Frey, property owner of 7322 Butcher Street, Elkins Park, PA, 19027 for the installation of a four foot high white PVC vinyl 50% open fence along the side walkway of property and continuing in the rear. Again, uh, do we have any comments from the ward commissioner? No. None shown, okay. So I'll move for approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item H3, approval of a certificate appropriate for the application L21-274 of applicant Emmanuel St. Louis, property owner of 1512 Willow Avenue, Elkins Park, PA, 19027 for the installation of a shed in the rear of the property. Again, any questions or comments from the uh, the ward commissioner? It, it does meet all the zoning restrictions and requirements. I already checked with uh, building and zoning on this, so there's okay. no objection. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. So I'll move for approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, no, nothing from the Wincote Bahar, so we'll go to item three, which is report of the township engineer and item 3A, recommend the Board of Commissioners approve an expenditure in the amount of $26,160 to Gannett Fleming for the engineering and design work for phases one, two, and three of the Tookany Creek at Gimble Field project. I would just make the following comment um, that this is 
um, an initiative that takes us up to permits and that oversees bidding. Uh, and then uh, I will have some questions for, for Mr. Phillips about the if the, he has a, a, an idea of the ultimate cost. But this is something that, in fact, we've talked about for a number of years. It was included in the original um, uh, a, original design uh, that was removed from the interceptor A project. So it is time and it, it's been something that's been neglected for quite a while. I know the neighbors are anxious to see that done. So uh, Mr. Phillips, if you would just uh, give the board and the community a little sense of what you're planning to undertake there. Uh, sure, uh, thank you. The, this is the Tucany Creek, which is adjacent to Gimble Field where the Little League Field is. And there's a, uh, a large gravel bar that has formed from silt and sedimentation over the years. And it's, it's creating some hydraulic issues in that section of the creek, which are now eroding the banks and uh, exposing some infrastructure. Specifically, there's a, there's a storm sewer outfall where the head wall is collapsed. So uh, to follow up on, on your summary, commissioners, this, this is the initial design and uh, field work and initial design to get us to the permitting stage where we can meet with the permitting agencies in order to determine if what we ultimately recommend uh, is acceptable to them and uh, the, the level of permitting that will then be required uh, will be will be provided to us at those meetings. Uh, there'll be a second and third phase of this project after the permitting phase that will be the final design and obviously the construction and the inspection uh, of, of the project. So this, this again, to, to be clear, just gets us to the permitting stage with a preliminary design so that uh, DEP and other agencies can tell us what the level of effort would be next for permitting could be as easy as a general permit could be a joint permit depending on on the, the requirements and what's determined that we need to repair out there uh, mr phillips do we have a sense of the timing what that's going to require to get you to that uh, permitting phase uh i would imagine that we're probably going to be uh, uh at that point within six to eight weeks uh depending on the how uh available the agencies are. They may require some field visits, but uh, that, that's the timeline I'm looking at right now. And we would, we would hire or you would oversee having an outside contractor do that work? Uh, it would be bid just like any other yeah, okay. infrastructure project, correct. Right, and then um, you would also be involved in overseeing uh, the project as it progresses through the implementation phase. And that would be separate. You would have a separate um, funding source, I'm assuming, for that segment of the project. Correct, correct. This proposal that's in front of you is just getting us to the permit phase. Okay. Uh, last question for me anyway is, do you have any sense of what the ultimate um, cost will be just in terms of directionally with, with, you know, you've obviously taken a fair look at it before you've, you know, drilled down. So I'm just wondering, as you've done with the, uh, with the stormwater management issues, we obviously don't hold you to everything exactly, but we're just want to get a sense of what that may entail if you can in fact provide that. Uh, yeah, I don't have the actual project sheet in front of me. This was included in the evaluations. I believe that we put a number of around $300,000 on this complete. I believe that, but uh, don't hold me to that because I don't have that document in front of me. Uh, heaven for friend that I would do that to you. Uh, I see okay. Commissioner Norris, your hands raised. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so this question is perhaps uh, best addressed to Allison. I'm, I'm just looking again for a rough overview of this project. Um, uh, what uh, Mr. Phillips has been describing is uh, just strictly on, on the uh, engineering and some of the permitting. But can you give us a overview of the trail project and where it stands and um, at least approximately what the township cost is versus um, what the funding we received for it. Uh, and after I'm done or after the commissioners are done in the chat box, uh, Robert, Robert Hislop has raised his hand uh, for a question. 
Uh, sure. So the trail project is funded by um, three separate grants, um, one through uh, DVRPC, one through DCNR, and the other through um, the Federal Transportation Alternatives Program, um, which that one is the TAP grant is the first phase that we're working on. It comes with a lot more strings attached to the design. Um, it's a much longer process. So we are in the process of wrapping that up, uh, that design phase up with the plans to go out to bid this fall. Um, and that is for the uh, bridge section of the trail. And that's approximately $750,000. Um, and it includes also kind of the approaches to the bridge roughing out that. Uh, then DCNR and DVRPC are funding the construction and final finalization of the trail and the plantings and the stormwater. Um, and I believe all told the funding is somewhere about 1.25 million. Um, I think the township's contribution is probably in that $250,000 range. Um, I'd have to get final numbers once we get a little further into the sure. bidding process. That, that's very helpful, thank you. Are there other questions for members of the board? Um, before we go to Mr. Hislop, so it, my question is, this activity, you know, and I remember walking that area, maybe, uh, it's not strictly tied to the trail, is it? This, this, in fact, has both the parking lots and area, you know, that part of the stream that, that basically the flow is, is being, you know, is, is basically in a no longer in control fashion. Am I correct that it's not simply tied to the trail? but it's really getting to um, both the parking area and those places that have flooded as a result of, um, of the problems with, that are within the stream. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, this is, this is not tied uh, directly to the trail. This uh, was brought to our attention because of the failure of the stream banks and, and uh, putting in peril some of the infrastructure that's, that's adjacent to that. Okay. And, and, and while I was listening here, I pulled up, uh, I pulled up my spreadsheet that we had sent you last week. It's $570,000. We have this estimated at all in. Including your fees or at the, for the construction? Yes, that includes okay. uh, engineering also. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Please, Mr. Zinkow. Actually, uh, this really uh, came to light when we were uh, walking um, for that trail with residents who had concerns about the trail. Actually, they led us over to the creek and we actually walked along the creek and actually saw the deterioration that Roger had spoken about, that this had been an issue that uh, I understand Bouchane James was supposed to be working on. And I believe there was some, um, I'm trying to think of the term uh, that would best describe it as a poor remedy to it that has failed. Um, so uh, this is something that we look to correct this and then move on to the next to the next project. Uh, but as Roger specified, though, it, it is significant and uh, it's one that uh, is starting to come close to impacting a home that's there. Uh, any other questions or comments from members of the board or staff? None being said, I believe, Mr. Hislop, you wanted to weigh in? It's Robert Hislop, 211 Harrison Avenue. And if I have a raise hand button, which I've seen previously, I'm not seeing it. So, I mean, that's, if somebody knows, you can let me know privately. I have two comments and they are um, on this gamut planning engineering letter. I'm seeing three tasks and they are South Bank stabilization, gravel bar removal, North Bank stabilization. And my only comment is when it, and I'm sure things have to be done, but I'm, I'm, from my perspective, we're treating effects rather than causes of flooding. Not that they don't have to be done, but just my persistence is if we treat the cause, which is flooding, you have less of the effects. And that's all I have to say about this work. I'm sure it has to be done. 
The only other thing I will address is Commissioner Norris's comment. Um, yes, uh, it's not so much me, but the 200 block, we were over an hour. I had a timely phone call from somebody here and I also called the police, so we're good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hislop. Um, any other questions or comments from members of the public? Okay, so I'm gonna uh, call the question and move on this to recommend approval of the expenditure. I assume this will come in our legislative session uh, at the end of the month. So Correct. all those in favor of the recommendation to approve the expenditure in the amount of $26,160 to Gannett Fleming for the design work for phases one, two, and three of the Tookany Creek at Kimball Field. A please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None being heard. So this moves forward. And that's the end of uh, uh, Mr. Engineer. Thank you so much. And we'll go to item four, uh, report of the township manager. And 4A is discussion on township facilities. I believe that that may be in the court of uh, Assistant Township Manager Elliot. But you may want to lead into it, Mr. Zinkowski. Sure, if I can. Just briefly, and I know it's been touched on by the commissioners. Um, Public Works staff is working uh, along with police and fire uh, regards to the numerous flooded roads uh, happening throughout the township. Um, uh, we're making some water rescues as well as individuals continue to drive into flooded waters. And I know we try to promote that as much as possible to not drive into uh, flooded waters, but um, water rescues are currently taking place. Uh, in that area, we'll continue to be out at it um, throughout the night uh, until we have some some resolve with that. Um, so that's what I have on that item. Uh, the other item as we lead into the township facilities, this is something we've discussed previously um, in regards to conditions and uh, a look forward. Um, so Allison has put together a presentation. So Allison, I'm gonna turn this over to you to step through the facilities. Okay, um, I am going to share my screen. And hopefully you can all see that. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so yes, we, we were tasked with um, providing a, putting together a report on um, our township facilities. Um, just taking a look at the condition and displaying what, what we have. Um, as, as you may have know, seen in the past, we've, we've brought to, to you um, that we have a large number of facilities and we also have aging facilities, which is costly both to our operational and our capital budgets. So we're just gonna kind of step through some of the, the issues and concerns. Um, Bob has been doing a really great job of going out and touring all the buildings and cataloging everything. Um, so that you all can see what's going on. Of course, uh, we have our beautiful township building that always looks good on the outside, but there's a lot of issues when you look at it on the inside. <laughs> um, so just kind of stepping into an introduction, looking at the average age of our building is 117 years across all 14 of them. Um, the, the average age of the buildings that are actively used for township building is 86 years. Um, which excludes Glenside Hall, Wall House, and Shovel Shop. Um, and as you can see further down, Shovel Shop is 247 years old and the Wall House is 339, which is pretty impressive. Um, our newest buildings are 40 plus years old. Um, and we have eight buildings that are more than 100 years old. So that's, our buildings have given us a lot of service over the years. And as you can tell, you know, as, as you know, with older buildings, they have a lot of, a lot of quirks. And if you don't keep up with them, um, a lot of maintenance issues, and sometimes they become outdated and outmoded for modern uses. Um, so we've kind of take, cataloged a lot of the concerns that we have um, with the buildings. It's a pretty long list, but we'll, we'll try and kind of summarize it for you. Um, a lot of these buildings are not purpose-built for municipal purposes. They're retrofitted um, for these operations. So that makes that challenging and costly. So our mechanical issue equipment has a lot of issues. Some of them are aging um, and inefficient, but also 
we've had issues where we've upgraded the mechanical equipment to say more energy efficient equipment, but didn't really upgrade the systems that feed out into the buildings to, to carry the, the warm air there. And it's caused issues and degraded the mechanical equipment so that it doesn't last as long as it should. Um, we, in order to, to save money, we've also deferred maintenance. Um, and so these buildings over time are, are becoming more and more expensive to maintain and operate and they're deteriorating more. So it's gonna cost more to fix them up and preserve them. We've also noticed a lot of structural health and safety concerns. Um, also, a lot of these buildings do not meet current accessibility standards. We've also found, um, especially during the pandemic, that um, these buildings are, are kind of hard to secure for both bio, terror, and other safety and security concerns. Um, we also have the inability, in a lot of cases, to separate the public from township functions. So, um, you know, we have often we're trying to have a meeting um, and you have the public walking through, which is, is kind of difficult. Um, in some cases, we have a lot of space. In some cases, we don't have a lot of space. So we find that the, the space we have is inefficient, inefficiently used. Um, we have probably too many buildings and too much, they're too far spread out, which makes it difficult to manage your, your staff and, and also um, manage the space that you have and other resources. Um, we, the township also recently signed, I guess it was a couple years ago now, uh, the Ready for 100 to meet the goals of reducing carbon emissions. Um, in order to upgrade the, these buildings to meet those standards, it would be very expensive to do, um, very difficult. Um, in a lot of cases, especially at the administrative complex, there's poor site circulation and parking, not enough parking. So there's a lot of conflicts in our parking lots. Um, and even one thing to add is sometimes our lighting can be difficult. Um, file storage um, is also very um, concerning and I'll show you some pictures of that later. Um, and also for our IT, um, we have inappropriate setup for our IT purposes. And I'm sure there's more, but this is, I think this is a pretty long list. Um, Um, one of the things too is I think our buildings also create a poor user experience. Um, the township exists primarily to provide services to its constituents. Um, and I don't think um, in some cases the facilities do provide a good first impression, but not always as you further, get further into the building and into the places where we have to interact with our residents, they don't necessarily provide a good user experience. Um, for, for example, I don't, I can't tell you how many times a day if I'm going into our lobby, how many times I hear people say, uh, or a receptionist say, you're in the wrong location. You want the tax office. It's across the driveway. You need to go to public works. It's down the road. So it should, we should be trying to figure out how we can have a one-stop shop that makes it more efficient for our residents to find what they need and the services that they have. Our facilities are cluttered and dingy and tired. Um, they don't meet ADA standards. Um, and again, talking about the, the, the sites for ingress and egress for vehicles coming in and out of the property, crowded parking lot. And then in the bottom corner, um, you'll see this is our third floor meeting space, which is also a file storage. And you also have to kind of come up this really steep set of stairs. And when we can't meet with people in the main boarded room in the admin building, we bring people up to this building. It's, it's cluttered, it's like a closet. So it's, it's kind of not the best, um, best way to get people into the building and see them. Um, this week we visited um, the Springfield Township in their new building. And you can see when you walk into the building to right immediately there is your reception area. You have your board meeting room with overflow. I think there's another meeting space. You have parks and rec, you have the police um, tax office, and um, planning and zoning all right there off that central location. They have the public works, EMS and library across the driveway. So it's very easy for a resident to come in who doesn't know what they're looking for to get to where they need to go. Um, and again, here's some, some things, some, what a nice clean uncluttered look would be very welcoming to our residents. We also have some health safety and concerns. 
Um, here's just some examples of photos around, around the township. I'm sure we could find more, but we have tripping hazards. We have dangers of, of um, you know, buildings that can fall down or deteriorated enough that they're a danger to the public and or our employees. And again, uh, cramped, cluttered, dingy spaces. Again, this is um, taken today in our building and zoning department. And see, we're, we're working with a resident and um, you know, there's a lot of clutter there, and a lot of dinginess. So it's not really kind of the best look for the township. Here's what a brand new planning and zoning department look, looks like. It's clear, uncluttered, there's a lot of space, there's place for collaboration. And there's a window kind of at the top left corner where residents can come and contractors can come and interact with building and zoning. And all their, all their files are right there for them. We also have very haphazard, inefficient file and other storage. This is, they just, these are some of the places where we store our files in the admin building and enroll in community center. We store them in places like restrooms, old bathrooms, eaves, attic, the basement, and just a spare classroom they roll in community center. As you can see, it's, it's not the best um, and, the, and the files are showing their age. Oops. There we go. And if it, um, this, is, this is kind of a, a modern standard with rolling files, compressed filing, um, and again, very, much more efficient for centralized rolling files, much neater and cleaner. We also have with our buildings as they age and deteriorate, a lot of leaks and water damage in the buildings. Um, I, I can say I'm pretty sure that our facilities manager is out there tonight. If not tonight, then tomorrow morning, first thing he's gonna do is look at all the buildings and inspect them for water damage. There's usually at least one or two that, that have water issues. Despite trying to fix them, um, you fix it. And then there's another, another spot where water comes in. Um, PFM, um, when they did their strategic management plan, they came up, they said that buildings are definitely a concern for the township's financial condition. And in summary, basically what they said, the age and condition of the township's buildings will have a significant impact on the township's capital budget. And it has more buildings and space that it needs to deliver the core municipal services, which places a strain on the operating capital budgets. And their recommendation was to do an asset uh, facilities plan to review and find out what we truly need and how we can kind of reduce what we have to, to really be more efficient. So we kind of, we did took a look at what the potential costs, this is extremely rough, but knowing what we know about some of the a handful of the buildings, we can say we're averaging probably 250 to a half a million dollars or more just to keep these buildings running. And so if you multiply that across our 14 facility, that's more than $7 million that would need to be invested into facilities just to keep them in operation, but it won't meet the modern requirements of providing these municipal services. So um, over the past few years, a lot of um, townships in Montgomery County have upgraded their facilities. So we, we looked around to see what, what kind of costs that they had um, to put into these newer modern facilities. A lot of them already had the land. Um, so it was a lot of um, just demolishing what was there and rebuilding. Um, so Springfield, which um, opened their building in 2018, they did an 18,000, 19,000 square foot police and admin building, 22,000 square foot library, 22,000 square foot public works facility at a cost of $26.4 million. Limerick Township, uh, in 2015, built a new public works facility at 23,000 square feet, and in 18, did a 34,500 square foot police and admin building for about $14 million, um, which is probably closer to the size that we would be looking for as far as police and admin. Horsham Township just rebuilt its admin building, um, which is 13,000 square feet in 2020 for 6.7 million. Upper Dublin just built, um, or is in the process of upgrading its own library. And I'm not sure if this $15 million is, includes the $5 million acquisition price or not, um, but that's about 65,000 square feet. 
that's a very, very large library. So I don't think that's something that we could compare to, but just for, for costs. Um, Half Real Borough, which is a smaller building, 11,000 square foot admin for 3.6 million. Lower Pottsgrove just bid their project out in 2021, May. Um, a 16,000 square foot police and admin building for 8.6 million. And Lansdale Borough, which is um, featured in the bottom corner, 2013, 2014 for $12 million at a 35,000 square foot police and admin building. So these are just to kind of give you an idea of what's out there um, and, and what, what these costs would be. So, and I'll let Bob kind of weigh in too on this, but um, some of the recommendations for next steps would be to seek, if this is something that you would like to see us pursue, would be to seek proposals from qualified architects to provide space needs assessment, a draft facilities plan and a rough cost estimate. So hopefully we could be able to create kind of what, what it would look like and help you figure out the costs. Also to seek proposals from qualified real estate attorneys to help assess the values of all of our properties. We have 14 properties that maybe if we're looking at combining some of these facilities into one or several um, locations that are closer together, um, we could divest ourselves of some of these properties and use those costs to put into developing a new modern facility. Um, and a real estate attorney would be able to help us develop that type of plan. And I, I think, and then we would utilize the architect, real estate attorney and staff to evaluate some new potential locations. Um, and then, you know, we could hold stakeholder meetings to discuss conditions of these facilities and everything we just talked about today and seek their input through ward meetings and discussions with various citizen committees that I think could provide some valuable input. So that's all I have. Um, I can turn it over to Bob. Sure. Thanks, Allison. And just to kind of wrap up, um, you know, we've looked at, at these buildings and it's something that just didn't happen overnight. It's something that, you know, it is it has taken years and years and uh, before this board of commissioners. Um, and at this point, you know, we talk about the proverbial kick the can down the road. Uh, the, the can is gone. Um, and you know, with the PFM report, what they came up with, and then just looking at the different buildings, um, you know, trying to, I know, keep a couple of the community centers open with the libraries at Roland and Lamont. Um, we took a look at it again. Um, we found out that through the state that the boiler for Lamont was um, decertified um, 10 years ago or by the state. So um, th th that's a problem. Um, and trying to get that back working is going to be very problematic. Uh, Roland is another one where could we patch, could we do something to get it together? Um, we possibly could, but it involves some asbestos removal within the old box um, that was original to the, to the school building. Um, and there's no guarantee of the work. So whatever temporary work that would be done to try to get it going, there's no guarantee it, it could actually fail the next day. And there's no guarantee to that work. Um, again, when we look at all the facilities and the buildings, I mean, you all know the conditions of those. Um, there are hard decisions uh, to be made. Uh, the energy efficiency is poor at best. Um, so um, long-term, um, you know, can we continue to afford to keep these? Um, you know, that's a, a difficult uh, decision that has to be made um, as well. Uh, but also being very concerned with, with our residents and our communities that has lived with these for years and years and years of how this change comes about. So um, we appreciate the opportunity to discuss and, and put this together. And we turn this over to the board now for your questions, comments, suggestions, ideas as we continue to keep moving through this. Allison, could you take down the PowerPoint so I can see the hands raised by the board? Absolutely. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna defer first to Commissioner Bransky who has been a, uh, uh, an active voice in, in this uh, matter for a long time. Yeah, Bransky, um, and, and I'm glad to see that Bob has brought this again in front of the board and I know the board was expecting some wonderful news about our facilities uh, and seems to be also interested in moving things forward in some direction. Uh, 
I and some others have been looking into alternatives for well over a year, probably a few years now. Um, truth be told, I think the first presentation I made from the Community Development Corporation to the board was in 2012 uh, about replacing some of these facilities. But um, I, I don't debate any of what you're saying. I mean, we could easily have most of the township buildings declared as historical monuments, second only to the pyramids, as far as their longevity. But the one thing that leaves me a little unsure because we do have to start taking steps forward uh, and specifically on some of the locations we're looking at is bringing in the architect and the space requirements. That to me is only a function of time. Um, if I thought this could be done quickly, terrific. It will need to be done, but um, we have asked the other departments for their space requirements. Some some information I got was rather specific. Some was kind of amorphous. Uh, some was off the wall. Um, one of our groups that we're talking to um, asked requirements for like 55,000 square feet. And it was like, I'm sorry, it's the only thing that's missing is a planetarium. Um, so this, this will be pared down and refined. But I do think the important thing is everybody has to realize that we have to make a change. Um, and it may come down to ripping the Band-Aid off and you know, not thinking, okay, we can have to fix this one first and do that one second. Um, our, our predecessors were infamous for kicking the can. Um, there are very few cans left, fortunately. We took care of the sewer issue, but this is another major infrastructure issue we have to deal with. Uh, and I would hope that the board will see this as an opportunity to explore options actively uh, with the intent of choosing something good to move on so that we can work our way out of an unworkable situation. I think this storm is gonna prove just how unworkable things are. Thank you, Commissioner Pransky. Commissioner Holland, I saw your hand up as well. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, so a couple of thoughts. First, um, Allison pointed out that um, other public sector uh, municipalities have taken action um, and it, it sort of speaks to a trend that's not only happening in, in the public sector, but in the private sector of folks, you know, reevaluating their spatial requirements, um, even given in, in light of, you know, COVID and the work from home posture and things of that nature. Um, you know, 20 years ago, people had big corner offices and, you know, great views and, you know, with the advent of technology, uh, I know there's a lot of lawyers on the line, you know, you, you don't, you don't need a lot of space these days. So I think it would behoove us to at least start, uh, you know, planting seeds, doing the research on, you know, moving the ball down the field here. Um, it is a long-term uh, prospect. Um, you know, I would suspect that many of us on the board might not even be here when the ribbon cutting takes place um, on, you know, a development of this magnitude. But, you know, I, I do think it is incumbent on us to start the process um, and, uh, you know, can, can get, get the ball rolling to see what the possibilities are. Um, I, I also think we should look at other, you know, large users of office space um, in the township and see if there's an opportunity to partner on something like this. I think that would be prudent to explore that. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Holland, Bob assured me that any project we do will be built within six months from the day we start. Six months. Is <laughs> any other commissioners want to weigh in on this? Yes, I will. Go ahead, Dan. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank Mr. you. Uh, just, just briefly, uh, I'm uh, also just echoing and endorsing that uh, action is needed. It is past due. Um, this problem uh, didn't come about in the past year or the past five years. Um, but we need to carefully examine our needs and determine what options there may be. 
uh, with some of our locations, as was mentioned in the presentation, uh, I think we have too many uh, buildings. Uh, some locations will need to be retired and, and sold off, uh, Glenside Hall and probably others. Um, so we'll have to uh, carefully find out uh, how much uh, we can get for these locations and what types of uh, options there are for development at these various locations. Uh, the township building uh, is on prime real estate along Old York Road, uh, and yet the township building is a historical building, so there are some restrictions on development. Um, lastly, uh, community input. It's, uh, our residents are usually not shy about giving their input, uh, but sometimes uh, they give it, um, I'm going to say too late, or at a later stage in the process. And uh, that creates some bad feelings. Um, so we want to, um, as we start this process, we want to publicize it and get, get it out there and uh, let people know that their input is desired specifically regarding the community centers and the library locations, uh, both of which um, are likely to be involved in any type of uh, building uh, restructuring or redevelopment in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I'm looking for any other hands raised. Um, Commissioner, Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, let me just say, this is the first time I've seen the slide presentation. And so that was very helpful, but I hope um, that will be on uh, our website uh, for those who didn't attend this meeting. And frankly, for any of the commissioners like me who weren't, who didn't, didn't see it before to go back and take a look at some of the details. Oh, no, this, seen of, it. this is all new. We haven't seen this presentation. Before. Okay, so I think, I think it's a beginning for all of us. Uh, and I think that point needs to be uh, stated for the public. Um, and, you know, I sympathize with Brad, what you were saying earlier about being on this uh, since 2012. Uh, you know, certainly when I came on the board, um, there had been already plans discussed. Um, there was a plan sitting on a shelf for uh, describing some of the issues that we're all familiar with. And um, there have been questions over time and studies done in the, in the past, I guess, 10 years, um, how much it would cost to relocate to, for example, one of the properties that we already have. Um, and the, the question was how much, um, how much could we sell one of the facilities for and how much would it cost to, um, to reestablish that facility in the new, in the other piece of land uh, I know I'm being vague here, but I, I don't I don't know how much of those studies actually uh, was public. So that's the reason. Anyway, the point was it, it did not make economic sense. That said, you know, research is a good thing. Figuring out our options is a good thing. We do need to assess that periodically. But I got to say, and, and this is a slap on all of our hands, if a taxpayer came to us and showed us these pictures of their facilities and why they're not living up to code, we'd cite them. We'd tell them we're not interested in their financial problems. And we'd tell them that's demolition by neglect and that's a violation of our policies. So. One thing we haven't really tried, we've tried retrofitting, we've tried all that kind of stuff. We haven't tried also very serious renovations, like the kind that people do when they wanna save a shell and they don't have options on locations for everything or because the location seems to fit and they've gutted the inside and done some, preserved some of the um, historic features, the tiles, 
or some of the other things that are valuable, some of the architectural features, and they've put in a restoration. Um, that at least saves us from perhaps having to buy real estate. I'm not sure that's the answer either, but that has to be also part of our um, going forward in an intelligent way, rather than just assuming uh, we're going to look like all the other townships that um, came, uh, came up in those slides. I, you know, there are different townships, there are different ages. They have a different build out than we do. And I think, I think we don't wanna be, um, you know, suffering from township envy. Um, you know, we need to do the best we can by our uh, situation. So let's let's uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Did, did Mr. I Mr. Chairman, Mr. Brockington. Okay. No, no, I don't want to repeat. I, Anne said kind of what I said, have we thought about like doing a gutting out and the sort of an internal rehab? So I don't want to repeat, but basically said what I'm going to say. Are there any other commissioners? Because I have a few questions or comments. On Mr. That. Mr. Chairman, if I may yes. briefly. Yes. Um, just the comments and I usually don't do this, but I'm going to. Um, the board of commissioners were kept in the dark in the past. There were a lot of these reports that came up that showed the conditions of the buildings that I don't see that the board was ever made aware of. Um, mm -hmm. I know that Ann said you want to be slap each other on the wrist, but I'm telling you, there wasn't a lot of communication to the board of commissioners, and that's a shame because these conditions were existing uh, and not being made aware. And, and we knew about them. We knew okay. about them, Bob. But we, I, we'd actually toured them. Many of us actually saw the basement. We've been in all these places years ago. Okay, well, I, and I just look at, um, you know, what Commissioner Pransky said and Commissioner Holland said, you know, uh, one of the things that I know in speaking with uh, Commissioner Pransky is, you know, we're not going to be the typical cookie cutter. We're not going to be the ones that say, well, because everybody else did it, we're going to do it. Uh, I've been through where there was a Taj Mahal built that was way out of sight to compete, which is ridiculous. Um, but also, too, is these creative opportunities to partner with people. And I think that's where, you know, do what's not typical of government. And that looks at being public-private partnerships, as you've mentioned, and doing things differently. And I think this is, you know, I commend this board for, taking that initiative to go that route and not just do the typical, well, let's, let's just, right. everybody else does it. So. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that, uh, that's absolutely. one of the options we've all been. Totally doing. agree. Did I see that there were some staff members who wanted to weigh in as well? No? Okay, I'm gonna, I'll put a couple of points on the table. Commissioner Rappaport, sounds like you described the Elkins estate uh, in your description of, of trying to preserve buildings. And I just would remind you of all the things that had to be done to get that approved and the amount of money they've gone into the market for somewhere around $25 million. So it becomes a formidable thing to try and preserve the history and the architecture and some of the accoutrements and still get things accomplished. Um, I, I think there's another comment to be made here. The condition of our buildings have a dramatic impact on township staff. They impact health. They impact work productivity and they impact job satisfaction. So one of the things I think that has to be factored in, not just as our, to our residents, but talking and involving staff in these plans because they have been and they continue to be dramatically impacted by those facility failings that you know been clearly pointed out. Um, Allison and Bob, I'd ask you this question. Of those facilities you've listed, whose consolidated facilities most resembles what you think this township needs? If in fact, there's any of those that you looked at that come to that, uh, come to approximate what our needs are and how so much could be consolidated into a single or centralized facility. Uh -oh, oh, Mitch, even, Mitch, even before Bob answers, I occasionally see him talk about one in particular and a little bit of drool comes down. So I think I know where he's gonna go with these. Um, I can say, just based on some of the ones that I've looked at, um, I think from a look at a single campus, I think Springfield, um, our neighbor, is a really good place to look. Um, it's probably a little smaller than what we would need, um, just based on the sheer size of their administrative staff versus ours. Um, but it's, it's a good place to look. 
Um, I think more on the scale that we would be looking at probably Limerick and Lansdale. Um, I think all three of those buildings are LEED certified. Um, I don't know that they've actually gone and gotten the certification itself, but they are built to be able to be certified. So there's, there's a lot to like about a lot of these buildings. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity that we can mix and match um, and, and, and be able to modernize our ability to provide service to our residents and be more efficient in what we do. I think kind of on the back end, there may be some savings that um, would be realized. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And, and, and I just, you know, I agree with Allison. Um, you know, the idea of a centralized cam campus is great. I think uh, Springfield has, you know, a typical model of that. Uh, I'm a big believer on in which Baron had spoke about. Um, people don't need offices, you know, individual offices, cubicles work good. The idea of communication with each other and not being away. Um, it, and I agree, those days of big offices are done and over with shared conference rooms. Um, but also the idea of, you know, do we have to be the ones putting the money up? Do we have to be the ones, you know, and I know Commissioner Pransky has, you know, has really brought this to light to me is, you know, do we have to be on the hook for, you know, let's build it because that's what everybody else does. You know, could we be a tenant in buildings? Could we be part of another type of complex that actually feeds to not only our building, but brings our residents together? Uh, do we have to be the operators too? Um, so I think this lends us a perfect opportunity in this climate, this environment with the economy uh, and given our, you know, the amount of projects we have sitting ahead of us from infrastructure to buildings, um, you know, let's look at the creative approach to doing this. And I, I think this board's going to do that. Thanks, Allison and Bob. And I think uh, two more things. I think uh, that we should probably forward this to the Montgomery County Planning Commission, Aaron Holly, along with, you know, sharing it with the Comprehensive Plan Committee, because it points us in a particular direction that I think we need to go to. And Allison, I want to directly thank you and Bob, because this was one of the areas that I needed to be able to have some dramatic presentation and representation to the federal, state, and county authorities for whom we're making our funding appeals, expanding beyond the CARES Act and the poor allocations that we got from the Recover Act plan. So this helps immensely. I'm two thirds of the way home, uh, actually uh, probably a little closer to 40%, 50% of the way home. So thank you, this really helps me immensely. I see that uh, Mr. Hislop again has a hand raised. He was able to find his hand, hand, this hand. And, and show us a Mr. Hislop. I see your hand first, so you're welcome to, to add some comments. So just to summarize, uh, you're at the info stage only. You're looking for options. These are ideas, they're not necessarily action. Um, and before everybody gasps, I was gonna say, is it feasible to sell buildings, but then I first heard it from Commissioner Norris. I had not heard that prior to this. Same with Commissioner Rappaport. So I really just want to supplement that instead of being the one to say it. Remember, we're not experts. We weren't in the sewer. We're not experts in real estate and building maintenance. Uh, the commissioners in particular, whoever decides to run for office and is elected regardless of background. So might you sell some, might you sell all, might you sell none? But I see this as similar to Curtis Hall, where there was some private agreement, potentially a rent back. And what was mentioned was historical implications and prime real estate. Well, if it can be accomplished, those then become dealt with by the developer instead of by a township. So I'm thinking what harm does a bid request or a request for proposal make as long as you can reject the values of those bids. And it's probably way too soon for that. But I, I really like that to be considered because you are in the business of managing, not some of these other specialties. And I, I do find, especially with Aqua, that the money spent now versus the reduction in inflow and infiltration is huge. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. 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 Cohen, David Cohen has, has his hand up. So Mr. Cohen, please weigh in. Yes, thank you. And um, 
Thank you for the presentation. And also I agree that, and I'll be a bit evasive intentionally, that it would be good to look at some other um, partners that could also possibly share space um, in some of these buildings or in one of the complexes. One thing I do want to raise, it was alluded to, is that um, some of the buildings may have difficulty being sold. I'm not trying to be negative or be a downer, but besides historic preservation concerns, I know where I believe that there's a deed restriction on the um, on the main property, the township administration property that somebody should look into that I think might make it difficult to sell the property or at least should be explored now versus later to see if that deed restriction can be undone. And similarly, there might be other restrictions on other properties outside of preservation. For example, if there are federal dollars utilized in those properties at some point in time. So again, just to be pragmatic, as part of the evaluation process, I would encourage the township to start to look at the buildings, especially the ones they might be inclined to sell the properties, just to make sure that if there are impediments that they're aware of them, and also that there are impediments that they can be dealt with proactively, I think that would be beneficial as part of the process. Thank you. David, um, just a follow-up question. Who, who would be, or what group of professionals would be the right ones to work with us on that issue to make sure? Is it our legal counsel as well as um, some outside architects, et cetera, or, or who, you know, as you envision it? Right, I think in terms of the properties and the deed restrictions or other limitations on the property, such as if federal dollars were utilized, it would probably be your counsel or maybe specialized counsel, such as real estate attorneys. Um, so that's what I'd recommend looking into. And one, one other point, because I do with the floor again, is that um, I'd recommend at some point, and nothing against architects or against attorneys, but looking at real estate firms themselves that do space planning and that do deals outside of possibly structuring a deal on another property, but looking at the township properties as maybe part of the evaluation process in terms of what can they basically draw on the market? What is the potential worth of those properties for part of your calculation in terms of putting together a broader deal? And similarly, looking at them in terms of some need assessments in terms of space, it's partly how much space you need for different functional purposes, but also the layout, the configuration, the types of space and have a meaningful conversation in terms of doing some conceptual planning work along the way. The last point I wanna raise is that um, things are evolving dramatically with COVID as we all know. On the one hand, it can be argued that there is a benefit and there's less need for office space because people can work remotely to a degree, but there's also concerns from what I've been following in broad terms, not with the township specifically, but in terms of having people work in cubicles might also not be the way of the future um, because of, again, even going outside of COVID because of concerns long term about people working in close proximity without having a separation, probably for concern about spreading of germs and diseases, but also in terms of productivity as well. So there is a countervailing argument to be made that cubicles might not be the wave of the future as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, are there any other comments? I'm not seeing hands. So if anybody sees other hands. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just... Yes, just Commissioner uh, Norris, again. Yeah, um, David Cohen was uh, nice enough to point out uh, one item that uh, was missing from the discussion, but uh, um, I assure him it was not going to be missing from our planning. That is any type of collaboration with the school district for a possible combined administration building. I'm not saying that will come about, but it will certainly be part of the discussion. Thank you for pointing that out, President Norris. Uh, not, uh, no more hands. I don't think we need to take action tonight. Allison, I would ask that all, that all the commissioners receive a copy of this. And Commissioner Rappaport, none of us have seen that yet. So this is the first exposure. So know that you haven't, uh, none of us yeah. are aware of-, no, of But it document. also should go online yeah. for, for residents and staff sure. to look at. As well. sure. Actually, and I don't disagree with you, but I find a little embarrassing to put that online. <laughs> I truly do. Well, uh, I, I mean, we should, it, I, it, you it, know, it why embarrassment is hand. not the up. operating right. issue. Here. Oh, no, I'm just saying it's, 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 you know, it's embarrassing to put that online. Yeah, I really see is. another resident, yeah. and Alyssa yeah. Davidson, yeah. weigh in, please. Hi, uh, it's Elisa. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi, Elisa. Your, your, ad, I, your address, please. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Winco. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, I, like I'm hearing about the boiler room in Lamont, um, and I have used Lamont 
for Girl Scouts and lots of good community programs and then rolling with the dance and all that. So to, I'm just, I'm a little worried. I don't want anything to close at a time when our community needs us the most. Um, so just wondering if there are, like what's gonna happen if you like- Plan B. Hey right. Bob, can you yes. speak to what's going on at Roland for sure. Alyssa? Um, what we're looking at is the amount of money that would have to be spent on that boiler. Um, and just the boiler itself is anywhere between a quarter of a million and a half a million dollars. But that does not include how it would match up with the plumbing within the building. So the consideration right now is to close the building for the winter, but reopen in the spring when the air conditioning unit's working well. And I think the timing is, I hate to say fortunate because of COVID, but because of the restrictions, uh, this may work out well, but it would only be a temporary shutdown during the heating months. But when we go back to air conditioning, uh, the building would reopen. Thank Bob, you, Mr. Bob, you, Bob, do you wanna elaborate also, on Lamont as well? Yeah. Sure, I, I, it's both buildings. It's both facilities that we would look at. So it would be both that would be um, winterized for again, the winter season, but then would reopen in the spring. Um, so it would only be a temporary closure and then we would look at reopening this up again. And then at the, at the same time, if there's new technology that's come out uh, regarding the mechanical systems within the building, um, that's something we'll take a look at. It's just those, those boilers were original whenever those school buildings were built a long time ago and nothing's been done to correct them, so. So Ms. Davison, as was noted, uh, this is an early phase disclosure and there's a lot of work that needs to go on and we will keep the public uh, aware of uh, what the plans are as we proceed. Um, I'd like Mr. to move on. Mr. Oh, Chairman, Mr. if I may. I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Th that's okay. Um, and and uh, following on uh, what uh, Manager Zienkowski just said, that obviously would have uh, some potential impact on our library system and the libraries that um, are uh, situated in those community centers. And Mr. Zienkowski, would you be kind enough to talk a little bit about the coordination that you have had with the library system in that regard? And I think there sure. are some uh, representatives of the library system here as well. Um, as you know, I sit on the board also. Sure, um, I know that um... You know, Mary Kay and, and myself, we, we've spoken on this. Um, I know it's hard for the library to have to close down because of their out, outreach, uh, but we have are looking to coordinate uh, with, again, some of the collections to be housed temporarily, but also we're looking at uh, potential of storefront locations to where they might be able to be opened uh, in and around Roland and Lamont so that we could still continue some programs um, as soon as we identify some locations, we will reach out to the property owners to try to have something for the winter season. Um, so that is an opportunity or an option for us. I know that the library is looking at uh, for book circulation that some type of cabinets or that where they could still allow residents who want to walk up to get books or reserve books that they were able to do that, um, which I think is, which is tremendous. Uh, so it'll be a ongoing coordination and efforts as we try to work our way through through this, but we are looking at into some potential temporary locations for the winter time uh, to be able to have those types of activities. So I want, I want to thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Zienkowski, for, for your uh, coordination with uh, Mary Kay and, um, uh, and your continued uh, communication with, with her and, and coordination with her. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, Mary Kay has been great to work with. And, and I know she's very passionate about the library and serving those neighborhoods. So, uh, it, you know, it's again, highly commendable and we'll do whatever we can to help and work along with the library. Thank, thank you. Thank everyone for their input and for the questions. Let's move, uh, close the report of the township manager, move to all business 5A. Uh, 5A is the update on the proposed stormwater management program. Uh, Mr. Zinkowski, would you like to start that? And I promise I'll pick up uh, a sure. brief, brief uh, conclusion. Um, I think there was some great uh, feedback from the residents uh, at the last meeting. Um, there were over 200 residents that were able to participate in the Zoom meeting, which is unheard of to have that type of participation, the comment, the questions, the concerns, and even the follow-up post-meeting. 
uh, with emails and questions and concerns and suggestions, which again shows the community is engaged. Uh, I commend the board again for being open to this, to listen to residents, uh, to hear the concerns uh, alongside this. Um, I know last meeting, uh, the weather was beautiful and sunny. Uh, tonight, we have a different weather scenario, again, that exposes the many issues that we have within the township. Um, so it, it, you know, you hate to see these, but again, it shows um, years and years of, of neglect. And uh, again, I commend you for taking the bull by the horns here uh, and actually looking to start to bring uh, not complete resolution or, you know, to make it all go away, but to help manage control stormwater uh, and to make improvements in areas that can make a difference within the community for health, safety, and welfare um, of the community. And uh, Mitch, I think. Yeah, I'll pick up just, okay. you know, I want to, for those who didn't participate, we ended up again, almost 200 people. Even at the end, we still had about 120 people that, that stuck through the full two hours. So briefly, what was accomplished, we identified and prioritized those areas across the township with the highest risk of flooding and uncontrolled stormwater flow. We established the basis for shared responsibility by every property owner, whether they were residential, commercial, or nonprofit uh, that actually contributes to the problem of stormwater. We presented um, 36 locations of the potential benefits and outcomes that included water quality, pollution reduction, infrastructure replacement or infrastructure repair, uh, flood control at both stream and street level. And lastly, we presented the fiscal implications for cost sharing uh, by all the payers, as well as by uh, debt service, or if we're fortunate enough by acquiring funds from the various state, federal and county entities. Um, and subsequent to that meeting, there, there's been a lot of discussions about how we make the funding more palatable to the potential payers. And we're, uh, we're still in the discussion phase. And as we were with the stormwater management presentation, we will be transparent as we get past that next phase. So I wanted to thank uh, Arcadis. I wanted to thank uh, Assistant Township Manager Elliott, uh, the Stormwater Advisory Group, and almost 200 of uh, the members of our community who took the time to participate in what I thought was a meaningful event. So thank you. And the matter is still not completed, but we're working on trying to get it as close to possible to do that January 2022 launch. And uh, we'll keep at it and, and be responsible in communicating should things change. Uh, are there any questions or comments from members of the board on that? Seeing none, so I just wanted to say thank everybody and let's move uh, all business item 5B, which is update on the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, DEP, the Glenside Flood Protection Project. Uh, and in fact, um, what this item is, is to consider recommending that the Board of Commissioners approve the amended right-of-way drawings for the Glenside Flood Protection Project, Unit 2, Project Number DGS 181-8, Phase 1, dated... Um, June, June 30th, 2021. I'd simply make the following statement before the folks from the DEP come into play. And that is that this Glenside flood protection project and the original paper arc on it, um, the evaluation law, you know, uh, started in the year 2001. So we have our 20 year project as we see another 20 year project come to conclusion. There've been three or more township managers and three to five board of commissioner presidents. And what I would say to this is, it's really essential that this moves forward. It was one of the topics in the stormwater uh, management and flood mitigation proposal. And we're anxious not just to um, look at the amended right of way, but to be in a position where this moves into implementation. So I'd ask the folks from DEP who are presenting to not only talk, talk to us about that item B1, but to also give us a perspective on what our expectations are as a board, 
as township staff and as a community to get this project into you know the shovel going into the ground as opposed to having another 20 years to, to contemplate what it could be. And with that, I'll turn it over. I believe there's people from the DEP that are here. Uh, I'm not sure who it is, uh, but- um, No, um, DEP was unable to attend. Um, there's a memo in the packet. I know there was a request for them to be able to provide an update, uh, but Mark Malik, who was the project manager retired and they're in the process of hiring a replacement for him. And they've asked um, to wait until they have somebody and have them on board before they come back. Um, but in the meantime, they have been working on updating the right-of-way plans, which, which is on schedule for them, or it's probably about a year delayed because of the pandemic, but um, they're, this is kind of the next phase that they have, have been working on. Um, and by the township signing off on these plans, that'll allow them to, to finalize those right-of-way plans. Uh, the, well, I did see sign-offs from David Cranick and from <laughs> various <laughs> township uh, uh, board of commissioner presidents. I also saw the signatory on the bottom of that document was Tom Ridge, who was governor <laughs> at the time. So That's since true. DEP isn't here, I'll make two editorial comments. One is it's about time. We don't need to go through another 20 years of watching the implications of that storm water coming down from Abington and creating havoc in our municipality without some mitigation. And the other thing I'd say is that um, as part of this process, there has to be a coordination with the Army Corps of Engineers six basin plan because that quote unquote is a fixed uh, item in terms of their plan. And so whatever is in fact being done in the Glenside flood project has to appropriately align with the Army Corps of Engineers six basin plan if we're going to progress with those two major projects, both of which have long duration and our patients, frankly, as a board, as a staff, as a community, really uh, should not be any more um, indulged in terms of how much more time we can tolerate these things to drag on. So that's my editorial comment. I'm open if there are any other members of the board. I see Commissioner Armin with his hand raised. So yeah. it's in your territory, go right ahead. Yes, my territory indeed, but it affects more than just my territory, obviously. Um, and and uh, Chairman uh, uh, Zygmuntfeld, I appreciate the um, the, the vigor with which you are encouraging this project to move forward. Uh, and, uh, and I share in that uh, um, encouragement. Uh, the, the fact is, uh, you're right, it's been 20 years. Uh, very little has happened. Uh, so uh, approving these right of ways is the first step for this project uh, to, to advance it forward. But we also need to be looking at um, some of the other components that we've been discussing over the last couple, uh, several months uh, in terms of property acquisition, uh, in terms of uh, obtaining additional funds that have been promised, particularly from SEPTA. I know those conversations have been um, pursued, but I think they to, to not to overuse a term, but need to be pursued with more vigor from uh, from our staff. Um, and the, the the other, and I know that it's being worked on, but but I would encourage um, a greater emphasis on this because once uh, Mark Malik's um, replacement is found, we need to be moving this forward. Uh, the, the the other point I'd like to make is. Um, sort of following on what Commissioner Zygmuntfeld said, this is sort of for the Glenside area, the downstream solution, right? There is still the need for an upstream solution. Uh, it is uh, being explored with the Army Corps. I know there was some uh, uh, more uh, um, uh, discussions recently about moving that project uh, expeditiously. And um, you know we're certainly at the, the mercy of the federal government in that regard, but um, this DEP project should not wait. It should move forward. 
and um, and it would be a great complement to the upstream solution as well. But um, in the in the interim, we need to we need to pursue this uh, again with all due vigor. I'm into the vigor. That's uh, it, uh, Commissioner Rappaport. I see your hand. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm thrilled to see everybody else uh, coming on. I know I've been pushing in every email, every opportunity about this uh, for all too long. So uh, I'm glad it's getting traction. I'm glad we're making this step. Um, it's very disappointing that um, we have gotten uh, something to sign on without uh, an update on what uh, it actually represents. Um, we see some pictures. Uh, they were very rough, very hard to read. And it really, we do need a full update of what they represent because there were, even in the past five years, at least two or three iterations of changes um, that some were done with the knowledge of the board. We found out uh, early last year that some were done without the knowledge of the board. Um, and so we need to know what we're actually looking at. And we also need to do due diligence and make sure that that contract that's in our packet uh, makes sense because um, there were one or two things that uh, really do need a legal uh, eye to uh, check over. So I'm excited, but I don't think we're prepared to actually vote on this until um, we actually get uh, bigger, if nothing else, then blow these uh, dimensions up so that we can actually read them so that and get somebody knowledgeable from DEP who can translate them basically so we know the final plan that we're actually um, signing. Um, but in the meantime, I agree. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Armin, also for emphasizing that we need to progress in actuality, meanwhile, on the property acquisition, on the money that SEPTA promised us in writing $315,000 laying on the table, waiting for over a year since last July, it was promised us. We have that in writing. SEPTA also promised us coordination and extra work on their um, uh, track resiliency, whatever they want to call it now. Um, that was also supposed to help with the right of ways and other things. And in addition, um, uh, well, maybe I'll leave it at that, um, but uh, it, it's great to see the progress and we just need to, to keep going. So Mr. two questions, uh, Mr. Zinkowski, I'm sorry, go ahead. If, if I may, uh, uh, Commissioner Rappaport, I understand your concerns with the drawings, but they need this approval to continue to develop their plans for you to come back to. Um, I don't think this is as committed to, this is an absolute. They need to continue on their preparation of the plans and drawings. So I think what they wanted to do is get an approval from you to amend the right of way drawing so they can continue on with their plans and drawings. Um, to amend it. Well, it says uh, approving the amended drawings. Right. So, so if that, these th are the amended drawings, we need to know. All I'm asking for between now and the 29th is that we understand what it is we're signing uh, and that our legal folks um, take a good look at the contract. Um, so, you know. Whatever we I think can do to that between. point, Commissioner Rappaport, let me let me intervene. Um, I think that we need uh, counsel from both our legal counsel, Mr. Bagley, and from our township engineer, Mr. Phillips, to weigh in on uh, those two issues. One, you know, the amended right of way and the legal implications, and two, in fact, the drawings, what they represent to us. So to me, I think we do have an extra 
week or so um, before our legislative session, I think between then and now, we need to have the input from both our attorney and from our township engineer that says this is in fact a step forward and progress is being made rather than them simply saying, we'll approve this or we're not gonna proceed. They owe us the time to at least review it and see what the implications are of these actions. Um, so my opinion is that I think we should table this uh, until we are prepared to get input from our two uh, councils, both our legal counsel and from Mr. Phillips, our township engineer. But I'll take Mr. Mr. Chairman, there. if I may. Yes. Um, so uh, I, I certainly have no objection to having um, our solicitor look at the agreement. I think that's uh, certainly prudent. I think between now and September 28th or 29th, when our full commissioner meeting takes place, that should be sufficient time for him to review it. Um, Mr. Bagley, I assume that would be accurate. Yes. Yeah. Um, and thank you. Um, and then uh, with respect to our township engineer, it appears to me from the paperwork that Mr. Phillips has re reviewed the drawings and has determined that they're appropriate for the work proposed is what it says. Um, so perhaps um, we don't need as much time for him to do that. I don't know if he's prepared to speak about it tonight, but, but certainly I would think between now and the uh, legislative meeting, he would be able to um, weigh in either in a memo or um, uh, in a verbal presentation on his uh, take on these revived, you know, amended drawings. So I, I, I would suggest we approve it ending that review. Okay, Mr. Phillips, uh, can you take a minute uh, just to clarify your point of view on this. Uh, sure. Uh, what I was asked to review was the, the uh, in fact, the additional right away that's required for uh, the project. I, I did not do a review of the project itself, but what I was asked to do was because this next step is for DEP to start the property acquisition process and finalizing the easements, uh, that's what I reviewed. And the easements are, in fact, appropriate for what's proposed on, on the, the, the project sites. And that, that's all it, this approval would be for is just the um, amended right away. It's not on the uh, on the actual project. It's just on the right of ways to accomplish what it is that DEP has previously presented. Correct. Correct. That's my understanding. Thank you. Okay, so, so uh, Commissioner yeah. Rappaport, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion at the moment. Well, thank you. No, Mr. Chair, I just, I wanted to clarify also, I'm not trying to hold it up. And I would agree that what we want to do tonight is perhaps vote uh, to go ahead uh, on the uh, 29th, but under the condition of making sure, again, with DEP on, on drawings that we can actually read what the the current uh, status is, whether how much of the um, parking lot, so to speak, is being included, because that was one of the areas that changed last year at the beginning of the year or back to uh, 19 uh, that we didn't know about. So I don't know, I couldn't tell if this includes those changes or if the changes uh, on North Avenue were uh, were included. So we okay. need to be able to read it and see it. The other thing I wanted to comment on, so you so saw a conditional um, uh, approval. And then the other thing, because it was alluded to, um, the two projects coordinating, the Army Corps and the um, DEP project. The first six years or so of the Army Corps project, that was a big issue. And it was resolved. The calculations, we don't want to go back. Definitely don't want to go back there. Uh, the Army Corps did finally decide that, yes, they could go forward independently, that the DEP project would not impact the financial um, 
uh, situation and their ratios and their uh, benefit analysis. And so, yes, the two projects can proceed independently. We do not have to wait to coordinate. So that's really important in terms of making sure that one isn't holding up the other. So thank you. Sure. Um, I appreciate that comment. I would simply say I'm a bit skeptical that that coordination uh, is still uh, maintained or held to. But, but be that as it may, um, uh, what I'd like to do is propose a conditional approval uh, with insight from our engineering and legal counsel, and also with you know updated drawings and narrative that clearly define what the elements are. I don't think that's objectionable. Uh, uh, does anybody Mr. support? Mr. Chair, yes. Um, does Rock. our engineer need to look at it again? I thought he said he already did, or did I misunderstand that? No, he did. But I, I'm just you know I'm just comfortable with having both of those uh, approved, as well as having the drawings and the narrative to reflect the most current understanding, current information. I don't think there's anything unreasonable in that. And Mr. Phillips can just confirm it, that's fine. Um, I do see yeah. a couple of hands up. I don't wanna take a lot of time, but um, I will give, uh, I see Emily Stein's hand up and I see Mr. Hislop's hand up. Uh, Ms. Stein, go ahead. Hi, Emily Stein, 101 Cliff Terrace in Wincote. Um, I just want to express my frustration both with PADEP for not attending tonight and with the township for keeping this on the agenda listed as an update. I mean, I've been in my house 13 years dealing with flooding in and, in and around my house, including tonight. And rather than dealing with that, I'm on this meeting expecting to hear an update. And this is not an update. I haven't heard anything that is proof that this project is finally moving forward after 20 years. And to keep this on the agenda as an update, when the people directly affected by this are being directly affected by this right now and have other things that they have to worry about, but are here instead to hear some hopefully updated information, which is not what's happened. That, that's really all I have to say. Your concern is noted, Mr. Hislop. Yes. Um, so I also noticed the uh, signature of Governor Ridge <laughs> and um, that first startled me, but um, I will defer to the people on Brookdale in Ward 1, but I'm pretty sure that this, I remember Commissioner Sharkey saying this, maybe not the signatures, but this began with an effort uh, in 19 early 90s, I'm gonna say 92, 94. So if that helps at all. My only point tonight, and it's been said and it's been reinforced, but I can't say it too often. I'd rather overemphasize because uh, I was pleased when Commissioner Rappaport said the same as Commissioner Mitch, I believe I'm losing track. But Yes, please, the vigor on both, the vigor on Army Corps, the vigor on DEP. The only, CI, the only thing I see on the agenda tonight is DEP and those two attachments. But the, the and, and, and I know that some of you understand this as well as I do, but for those who don't, the benefit cost ratio, I need at least to, to shut up, I need to see from attorneys uh, you know, Mr. Malak has said it. Yes, we're in regular meetings with DEP with Army Corps. So has Scott Sanderson. And I'm pleased to see somewhere in the attached letters from DEP, Mr. Douglas Hill, which is a higher level of visibility, and perhaps Mr. Blum on the Army Corps side. I'm not really sure. But I want the attorneys on the Army Corps side because they are it's their condition. It's not DEP's condition to say, yeah, we can do shovels first or we can do plans first or what even, whatever it is you're voting on tonight. I want the Army Corps attorneys to say, don't cross this line and our attorneys to understand where that line is. Cause I frankly don't understand where it is. And, and yes, I've asked and yes, it's been answered, but, but it's a regulation and, and we need that in writing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hislop. Uh, your counsel is always valued. Um, so I did provide a, an amended um, an amended recommendation. Uh, are there any comments from members of the board? 
Uh, so I'll move to question all those in favor of the conditional approval with engineering and legal counsel, as well as updated drawings and narrative to help clarify the situation. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed, thank you. Passes, and I, I guess we'll handle that at our legislative meeting on the 29th. Next, we go to new business 6A. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners present and adopt a resolution honoring Michael Fleming upon his retirement after more than 10 years. I think he's got more than 10 years of dedicated service with Tottenham Township at the September 29, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting. Does that require a, a, a correction of the number of years? Anybody now? Okay, well, I'll certainly, if, if in between uh, now and the, the September 29th meeting, I hope the number, if it needs to be uh, corrected or updated well. Are there any questions or comments about that uh, about that item? Mitch, I do is believe there, that is correct, the 10 years. Is, is it correct? 10? Boy, he, he's been around, he's always around. <laughs> Mr. Pransky, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I, I would consider a, a conditional approval. And did we actually say he could retire? <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to make that issue, Mr. Prince. Oh, okay. okay. Um, all those in favor of the uh, honoring Mr. Fleming? Absolutely. I, 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 nobody's opposed. I, I emphasize. Uh, item B is consider recommending the Board of Commissioners board a contract for furnishing bituminous materials to Glasgow Inc., Glenside PA, in the amount of $26,062.50 from October 1, 2021 through September 30. 2022, and I believe this is one of the last actions that Mr. Fleming uh, put through. Uh, any questions or comments on this award? None being stated. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item uh, 6C, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners award a contract for furnishing equipment and an hourly rental rate to Glasgow Inc., Glenside PA, and Riley Sweeping Inc., Fairless House PA from October 1, 2021 through September 30, 2022. There's an attachment. Any questions or comments on this contract? None shown. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, a new item just added today. Uh, item 6D, recommend the Board of Commissioners authorize the township manager to disperse hazard pay in the amount of $99,900 to township employees as outlined in the written proposal dated August 27, 2021, which was distributed to the board, made available to the public, but only to the extent such hazard pay can be provided for with Recovery Act funding already received. And uh, Mr. Township Manager, I assume this is an item you'd like to talk about. That's correct. Um, I'm asking the board to consider uh, approving this uh, this one-time payment to employees under the federal recovery plan monies um, received by the township, which our first payment was received was $1,942,712.91, in which we are to receive an additional payment next year according to that plan. Within the federal recovery plan, it does allow for um, dollars to be used for towards essential worker recognition and payment for their service provided during the unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic, which it's obvious it continues today. Um, during this time period, a number of our staff members uh, actually during the uh, process of doing their jobs uh, in the community for the township, for our residents and businesses and schools, um, they contracted COVID. Um, but each other pulled together to get through this. Um, the dollars that we're looking for um, are $99,900. Um, and uh, I want to thank Nate Crittenden for put, putting the numbers together. Uh, I know that it works out to less than a dollar an hour recognizing the staff uh, for their efforts during this time period. So I would ask the board to um, consider this one time uh, recognition under the federal recovery plan monies received by the township. It's not township uh, dollars. These are monies that were received through the president's federal recovery plan. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, I see hands up. Uh, Commissioner Holland, I'll go to you first. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to recognize Bob for uh, being an advocate 
uh, for the staff and, um, you know, recognizing the, uh, the efforts and wanting to, uh, to reward the staff. So thank you, Bob. Thank you, Commissioner Hahn. Commissioner Pransky, I saw your hand. Um, I didn't want anyone in the township to think that the township was playing Scrooge on this. Uh, it sounds like oh, we too got 1.9 million. We're only giving that much money. Um, the township received a total of 3.8 million in total uh, this year and next. Uh, our neighbors, the other suburban townships, received numerous times more than anywhere from 19 to $23 million. That's because of the way it was calculated and we are trying to see what we can do to help assuage that. But um, considering all the things we have to deal with, uh, we were trying to squeeze out what we could and still maintain uh, an operating township. Thank you, Mr. Pransky. Any other comments? Commissioner, uh, Board President Norris, you always get the first nod. Go ahead, when I see it. Thank you, Commissioner Zickmanfeld. Um, just, uh, I just wish to, on uh, behalf of all the commissioners, uh, let all of our staff know that we appreciate the work that they've been doing during the pandemic. Uh, and frankly, we appreciate this, the work that our staff does on a day in and day out basis um, all the time. So this is our, our attempt to say thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Armand, not to be neglected, of course. Not, not neglected at all. Uh, I defer to President Norris. Um, so so uh, th and to echo some of the sentiments that have been made, uh, as in most organizations, it's the people that are the backbone and make, uh, make things work. And in this township, uh, our staff, starting with uh, Manager Zienkowski and uh, across all departments, uh, it's the staff that makes this township really hum. And during this difficult time uh, of COVID, uh, it was um, harder for all of you uh, and, uh, and you still made it work. So thank you uh, on behalf of myself, my family, and I think I speak on behalf of the entire board. Uh, thank you for your efforts. Uh, and um, this is uh, you know, sort of a, a token of our gratitude, uh, but know that our gratitude uh, is much bigger than any amount of money we could give you. So thank you. Well stated. Well stated, man. Okay, uh, call to question. All those in favor of the approval of the disbursement of the hazard pay in the amount of 99900 Aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed? Thank you, uh, Mr. Zienkowski. Thank, thank you very you. much. The thank you very much. We'll, comment. Great staff job. is greatly appreciated. We'll let the staff know. Thank you. Well, any other new business? I see none. Uh, we'll move to Citizens Forum. The citizens have had a lot to say tonight. Are there any additional comments for more citizenry? Allison, you see anything? I guess we've covered everything. So I'll move for adjournment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you.